This is a quick follow-up to my last video with a DC boost converter. A few questions about the efficiency of these circuits. So I've rebuilt it on the breadboard here, made one or two modifications which I'll talk about in a few minutes on the SPICE simulation. Important thing to notice is we've got 1.25 volts going in at 6.5 milliamps which gives us a total input power of about 8.13 milliwatts. I've got the Rigol oscilloscope measuring the voltage through 9 ohms of precision resistance here and we're getting a little over 10.5 millivolts so if you work that out that's about 1.14 milliamps going through these resistors which is then therefore going through our LED and the multimeter here is just measuring the voltage across our LED and it's showing 1.84 volts so if we're getting 1.14 milliamps across 1.84 volts we're getting approximately 2.1 milliwatts going through our LED. So 2.1 milliwatts out of an input of 8.1 gives us an efficiency of about 26% on this particular circuit. And I have made a few modifications to try and optimize this. But if we have a look at this on a SPICE simulation, we'll see that in theory at least, you can get quite a bit more out of it than this. Okay, let's have a look at this high efficiency circuit on a SPICE simulation. Uh, I'm running on 1.25 volts here and assuming a series resistance of about 2 ohms. don't know for certain what the series resistance of my power supply is, but there's possibly a couple of ohms in there. Significantly, I've increased the inductor value from 47 micro henrys I used in the last video to 4.7 milli henrys in this circuit. This is the largest value I've got off the shelf. You can get a bit larger if you shop around. Uh, we'll have a look at that in a little while to see what difference it makes. But basically this is a much, much larger inductance we've got here. So that will slow our circuit down significantly because the inductor controls the time base. The transistors I've left the same. The resistors here, which are acting as a parallel resistance to ground when the transistors are on and acting as a series resistance to ground when they switch off. These were 100k in my previous video. I've increased these again to the largest value I've got off the shelf, which is 4.7 mega ohms. Uh, the diode is the same, the capacitor is the same. We'll see what significance it makes taking these out of the circuit in a few minutes. Uh, this is my precision resistance. These are 0.1% precision resistors I'm using, two of them in parallel to give me a fairly low resistance. That's purely so that I can measure the voltage drop across there, calculate the current and therefore calculate the current through our LED. If we run the simulation and have a look at the power we're getting through on our LED by holding down the ALT key, that's the power that we're getting out which it tells us is about 4.3 milliwatts. In actual fact we weren't getting quite this much, we were only getting uh, around about 2 milliwatts, so I suspect this is to do with the diode model that we've got here. It's not quite the same as the diode I'm using in the actual circuit. I was getting about 2 milliwatts out of it, so about half the current, about half the power. If we have a look at the input power rating, this is going to be inverted just the way SPICE works, but I can soon correct that by typing a minus sign in, and we're getting a peak of about 22 milliwatts. Now if I take the average of this by holding down the control key, it tells me that the average is about 7.8 milliwatts and we were getting 1.25 volts in at 6.5 milliamps which gave about 8.13 milliwatts so we're not too far out here. It's probably down to the fact that the series resistance is not quite correct and also a lot of these components, although the circuit simulation is very precise, they're not necessarily accurate. These components will have some tolerance variation in them but ballpark figure 7.8 milliwatts going in which is what we had before and ballpark figure if we take the average 4.35 milliwatts going out through our LED so if we take the ratio of those two 4.35 divided by 7.8 we get 56 percent so in theory according to the SPICE simulation this circuit should be about twice as efficient as we were actually getting in practice I suspect that's simply down to the fact that this diode model is more efficient. But it does show that, in theory at least, these dual thief circuits can be reasonably efficient. They're never going to be as efficient as a proper DC uh, converter chip that you probably have to spend a little bit more money buying. But uh, nevertheless, 20-30% efficient in practice 
in theory maybe 50% efficient and I suspect if we change these values we can actually do a little bit better than that as well. Now this is a slightly modified version of the last circuit. I've increased the inductor value up to 100 millihenries, which is about as large as you can conveniently find off the shelf. Uh, you'll probably have to get a, a radial inductor rather than an axial inductor to get that sort of a value. Uh, I've increased the resistors to about 10 mega ohms, which again is possibly as large as you're going to find conveniently. And uh, the diode I've swapped to a Schottky diode to give us a lower voltage drop across here, uh, assuming that we're going to be getting a similar amount of uh, power coming through, a lower voltage means a higher current, uh, so we don't want to be losing all our voltage here, so I've swapped that out for the sake of the circuit. Everything else is uh, otherwise the same. The uh, green trace here is the power coming through our LED, which you can see is reasonably stable. We could perhaps do a slightly larger capacitor there, but we'll go with this, and that's giving us 4.56 milliwatts. So uh, we'll call that 4.6 for sake of argument, and our average power in is 5.7. So again, if we take the ratio there, 4.6 divided by 5.7, this circuit in theory is 81% efficient. In practice, you might not be hitting that. If we have a look at the current through our LED, it's not huge. We're getting an average current of about 2.6 milliamps. That's probably enough to illuminate an LED and make it visible, but nothing huge. But nevertheless, that is claiming at least to be about 80% efficient. Uh, but the downside is you need quite a high inductor and your current output, as you can see, is pulsed again. Increasing this value of capacitor may work, but it may also make the circuit a little more efficient. If we take it out, we can have a look at what actually happens without that capacitor. And although our peak current has gone up, I don't think it's made an enormous difference. We're still getting about two and a half milliamps on average. So the smoothing capacitor helps, but uh, at the end of the day, it's a trade-off between getting a bit more current through the thing and getting a bit more efficiency. If you want more efficiency, higher inductor, but then you're going to have a lower output current as a result. High resistors as well are going to limit the current that we're getting because they're going to make the transistor switch much sooner. So the current buildup isn't going to be as large. But uh, that's pretty much the trade-off you get. In theory, 80%. In practice, probably less than 50 on a good circuit. And one more quick test. Uh, somebody asked what happens if you take the LED out of the circuit if we're getting about 6.5 milliamps with the LED in. According to the oscilloscope, we're only getting about a milliamp going through it. So if I take the LED out, we should drop by about a milliamp and pretty much that's what's happening. We're going from 6.5 down to 5.4. It's not the whole story, of course, because our LED is running at 1.84 volts, whereas our input is only at 1.25. So it's not all about the currents. You've got to factor in the voltage difference in these things as well to calculate the power. But uh, measuring all this out, about 25, 26% efficiency. According to the SPICE simulation, should be twice that, but it's not probably we need a better LED in here and in theory if we push the circuit even further we might be able to get up to 70-80% theoretically in the real world perhaps 50 or 60 on a good day so that's some proper measurements